my teeny weeny little kiln, my teeny little pottery kiln. It's a Cremati 40 litre kiln and it's half loaded at the moment. Um, that's the second. So I've got a shelf in, I've, I've got two shelves in there already. And when it's full, I can usually get about 15 mugs in it, 15 medium sized mugs in it. Um, so it doesn't take, it doesn't have a large capacity, but it's probably big enough for my needs. Although it'd be nicer if it wasn't quite such a squash um, to get everything in. Um, so I thought I would just load it up and then fire it and then film an unloading. So I've got a few mugs in there. I'm just going to put this in there now. That's my little cone pack, which I've made, which I'm going to pop in. I put a cone pack on each shelf. And what I found is that um, in a glaze firing, the bottom shelf and the top shelf are slightly cooler than the uh, the middle shelf, but only uh, only fractionally, nothing to be too worried about. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And I don't know whether I can film myself putting that in there. I think I might have to put the camera down and do that. Um, and then I'll just load up the kiln and turn it on and then show you what it looks like when I'm unloading the kiln. Okay, see you in a minute. So I try to make sure that the kiln furniture is sitting immediately above. So the posts here need to be sitting, um, that's enough space, um, need to be sitting directly on top of one another. And the kiln brick's extremely soft, so and put it in very carefully. So the next thing to do is to, to try and fit, I've got five more cups to fit in there. I think I'm going to be able to squeeze them in. We shall see. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but that glaze is very cracked around the top. And that is not something I would normally be happy about, but it's the oatmeal glaze from Potter's Choice, and it does tend, it's very, very thick. And um, it does tend to crack when it dries. So, if you're wondering, that's what that's about, but it does look okay when it's being glazed, when it's been fired for the most part. Also, I've got to have some space in there for the cone pack, which I think should fit in there. Don't want co falling cones to stick to cups, stick to mugs. Okay, I'm gonna go and get the other kiln cookie. These are my little kiln cookies, which I made yesterday evening, and they are mm, pretty much dry. They're very thin. Um, it's thin, unfired clay. So it should be fine to fire because it's so thin, and by the time this actually gets around to being, it, by the time I get around to switching the kiln on this, this they will be bone dry. Yeah, I'll see if I can get this guy to fit in. There we are. Perfect. So I'm going to leave that now until tomorrow morning. I usually put the kiln on very early in the morning, about sort of 4.30, 4.30, and then it will take, uh, it takes about, it takes a good 12 hours really to do a, 12 to 13 hours to do a cone six firing in this kiln, just because it's quite old and it takes a long time to get up to temperature. Once it's got up to um, 1100 degrees centigrade, it really slows down and the last, um, the last 100 degrees, 100 or so degrees, takes a long time to get there. So anyway, I'm going to close the kiln now and switch it on tomorrow morning. And then when it's all fired and lovely, I'll open it up and see what it looks like. 
some of these pieces I'm using some glazes on these pieces that I haven't used before and as you can see you can see that actually see that the oatmeal looks really crusty on the top there but it'll look fine when it comes when it's when it's been fired um, but some of these glazes are are new to me some of these particular great glaze combinations are new to me and I don't quite know what they're going to look like whether they're going to look nice or not and I don't know whether they're going to run so it might be a bit of a disaster or it might be fab it might be fabulous you just never know do you um, okay all right there you go that's my little kiln loaded up ready to fire tomorrow see you tomorrow so the kiln is now at Let's have a look, what's it going to? 50, it's 50 degrees centigrade. It took um, 13 hours and five minutes to get to 1205 degrees centigrade. And let's see what we have got. Okay. Right. So what's first? This one, let's have a look at this one. Still, <clears throat> still a bit warm, but okay. So that looks nice. That's um, obsidian and smoky mallow with I think I think that was indigo floater. It might have been blue rutile with seaweed at the bottom. bad feeling about this. What's going on here? Uh-oh. Well, there you go. That little cone pack has in fact welded quite successfully. Looks like the cone has been trying to bend over and it's just caught on that handle. Don't want co falling cones to stick to cups, stick to mugs. Um, but that's okay, I'll break it off and I can break this off and then grind that down, it'll be okay. Um, one thing that I would say actually with these, if something like this ever happens to you, what I would not recommend doing is just snapping it off and then doing that with your finger. I did that before once, the um, cone pack stuck to the kiln shelf and I sort of scraped it with my thumb thinking oh I'll just be able to remove that with my thumb and actually what happened is I just sliced my thumb open because this is glass essentially and um, it's very sharp and I sliced my thumb open and I didn't even notice that I'd sliced it until I was bleeding all over the kiln so that wasn't that wasn't a good look but the glaze is really nice on this I like the glaze on that. So that will be nice. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, there you go. You live and learn. So let's have a look at this one. Okay. That looks nice. And then that's Ooh, that's nice on the inside, isn't it? Okay. What else have we got? <clears throat> oh gosh, that's quite melty, isn't it? I was quite lucky with that one. I did put a lot of glaze on these pieces. I mean, it's very nice but I think this probably would have done with a slightly larger mug a taller mug it's nice though I was quite lucky with that little trip there wasn't I
Okay, let's see what's going on underneath. So let's have a look at this. These are still quite hot. Oh, that's rather nice, isn't it? That's the obsidian glaze. I've not used that obsidian glaze before. Yummy. What else? Hot, a little hot. That's quite sweet as well, isn't it? It's quite a nice contrast with the I like the um, the reds have survived quite nicely with that. Let's have a look and see what cone it got to, because reds tend to burn out if you go too high. Well, that's the the one in the middle is the six cone six, so that's pretty much pretty much perfect cone six, I would say. Mm, that's quite nice. Looks rather nice. That's really nice around the top, isn't it? Let's have a look at this one. Aha, oh, uh -huh. this one has stuck. Oh, that's a shame because that colour's really nice, isn't it? Well, there you go. That has in fact stuck. Oh, there we go. Well, that's the beauty of kiln wash, isn't it? That is the beauty of kiln wash. Hooray for kiln wash and kiln cookies. So, well, I can grind that down, but I love that com combination of colors. So, I mean, the glaze, it does say on the glaze, um, the reading that I did about this glaze before is that it's very fluid, this one. So I'm not really surprised at all that this one's run. So there you go. I'll try it again with a larger pot and look on the inside. Look at that on the inside. Lovely. Now what's going on with this one? Okay, oh, that's quite sweet, isn't it? That's, he's a, he's a chunky boy, that cup, isn't he? I know, that I, I made that specifically for a friend of mine who's quite a chunky guy, so that's a chunky old cup. Let's have a look, okay. So that is the last cup with the obsidian glaze on it. Okay, so again on the base, it was pretty much a perfect cone six. That cone's being, it's landed on the cone five there, so it hasn't bent over completely, but Looks like it was pretty much a perfect cone six. A couple of problems, which I'll have to figure out what to do with, a bit of grinding down. So we've got this one, um, where the palladium glaze was quite runny. 
of course we've got the old uh, Oh dear, that's quite funny. We've got the old, um, I wonder if I can break this off now. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, it's snapped off. I can grind that off quite easily, can't I? I think that's my favorite. I think that's rather, rather nice. It's nice on the handle there. Anyway, so that is my little kiln unloading. Let's just, show you exactly how teeny weeny it is yeah lots of potters have got great big monster kilns where they can pack in tons and tons of stuff and um, that's my little tiddler but I love it I my daughter calls him Mr Hottie she's named him Mr Hottie she's only four so we'll forgive her so he's, he's been christened Mr. Hottie, which I think is fitting. Anyway, I'm just going to put these on a table and then I'll take a little photograph and show you a little photograph of the lineup of the usual suspects in a moment. Thanks for watching. Bye.